Good evening, everyone. I'm Jamie. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. Hey, I struggle with anxiety, um, sometimes anger. The Lord's working with me on that, and it's getting a lot better. Um, tonight, we're going to go over sponsor. This is very, very critical in our recovery, so we're going to go over a lot of information here. Thoughts for you guys to ponder, questions to ask yourselves when you're looking for a sponsor. Um, today, or not today, but this week was a very special week for me. Um, I want to share with you guys that I hit three years of my sobriety from um, alcoholism. So that was a very big, big time for me. Thank you very much. It's always something to work on, but alcohol is one of those things that, you know, is what I was struggling with. So sponsor, principle four, openly examine and confess my faults to myself, to God, and someone I trust. Matthew 5, 8 says, happy are the pure in heart. Step four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Lamentations 3, 40, let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the Lord. Last month, we talked about the importance of having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ which you found when you made the decision to turn your life and your will over to the care of God. Now you will see that the road to recovery is not meant to be traveled alone. That's the most important thing for you to hear tonight. <clears throat> you will find that you actually need three relationships. Most important is your relationship with Jesus Christ. In addition, you need the relationship of your recovery group or church family. That's why we're all here. Welcome. <clears throat> and also, you are going to want a relationship of a sponsor and or accountability partner. Identifying a sponsor and or accountability partner is especially important before you begin principles four, four through six, in which you work on getting right with God, yourself, and others. Principle four is all about getting to the truth and coming clean. Proverbs 15, 14 tells us a wise person is hungry for the truth while the fool feeds on trash. Are you ready to feed on the truth about your life? Well, then it's time to take out the trash. That trash can get pretty heavy at times, so we should not handle it alone. We need a genuine mentor, coach, or in recovery terms, a sponsor and or accountability partner. Some of you may still be unconvinced that you really need another person to walk alongside of you on your road to recovery. So tonight we're going to answer the five following questions. One, why do I need a sponsor and or accountability partner? Two, what are the qualities of a sponsor? Three, what does a sponsor even do? Four, how do I find a sponsor and or an accountability partner? And five, what is the difference between a sponsor and an accountability partner? So let's start with why do I need a sponsor and or accountability partner? There are three reasons that you need a sponsor and or accountability partner. Having a sponsor or this partner is biblical. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 tells us two are better off than one because together they can work more effectively. If one of them falls down, the other can help him up. But if someone is alone, there's no one to help him. Two people can resist an attack that would defeat one person alone. I know in my struggles and on my journey with recovery, I have had mentors, sponsors that when I'm falling down and can't even see it, they can see it. They've been there, they know it, and they can, they can pull you back with, with God's word and what he has to offer and, and help you through that. Proverbs 27, 17 tells us, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. The phrase one another is used in the New Testament over 50 times. Having a sponsor or accountability partner is a key part of our recovery program. Do you know that your recovery program has four key elements to success? If your program includes each of these areas, you're well on your way <clears throat> to the solution and wholeness. The first key is maintaining your honest view of reality as you work each step. I've yet to see this program fail for someone who could be completely honest with himself or herself. That's a key component right there. We can, you know, we can bury things, we can stuff them under the rug, but if we're not honest with ourselves and to the Lord, then 
we're not going to have as much growth. I have, however, seen some give up on the recoveries because they could not step out of their denial into God's truth. Having someone to help to keep you honest is a real plus in successfully working the steps. The second key element is making your attendance at your recovery group meetings a priority in your schedule. That doesn't include taking off for the summer or, you know, I got this. Um, when do we ever really got this? God's got us, but we have to work these steps. We have to make this a priority. <clears throat> Remember our hurts, hang-ups, and habits don't take vacations. We need to make Wednesday nights here at Celebrate Recovery and other meeting nights that we attend a priority. A sponsor and our accountability partner can encourage us to attend our meetings. The third element is maintaining our spiritual program with Jesus Christ through prayer, meditation, and the study of his word. For me, um, this is another reason I fell, because I was going through and I was doing the walk, uh, you know, walking and listening and listening and listening, but I wasn't listening to the Lord per se. Um, I wasn't in His Word and having that connection with Him, and that is the, that's the key. The key is to have that connection with, with Him. He speaks to us in His Word, and He speaks through other people as well. So <clears throat> we're going to focus more on this in principle seven, but you don't have to wait until you get there to develop your relationship with Christ. Your sponsor can pray for you and help to keep you centered on God's word. The last key element to a successful program is getting involved in service. Once you've completed principle eight, you will be able to serve as a sponsor. <clears throat> until that time, however, there are plenty of other surface, service opportunities <laughs> service opportunities to get you started. You know service is nothing but love and work clothes and there are plenty of opportunities to suit up at Celebrate Recovery. We need help with making dinners for our forever family meals, um, reading steps and principles. If you ever feel the, the urge that you wanna come up, please, please come see one of us. Cleaning up and there's much, much more. If you want to get involved, see me or another leader or speak to your small group leader tonight. Your sponsor can also suggest ways for you to serve. Without exception, everyone here needs a sponsor and or an accountability partner. Having a sponsor and or this partner is the best guard against relapse. By providing feedback to keep you on track, a sponsor and or accountability partner can see your old, dysfunctional, self-defeating patterns beginning to surface and point them out to you quickly. He or she can confront you with truth and love without placing shame or guilt. Ecclesiastes 7.5 tells us that it is better to be criticized by a wise man than to be praised by a fool. I love that. The trouble with most of us is that we would rather be ruined by praise than saved by criticism. <clears throat> So moving on to what are the qualities of a sponsor? This is where I'm gonna ask lots of questions. So when you guys are sitting here, start thinking. If you don't have a sponsor, thinking about you know these questions and who may come to mind. <clears throat> Proverbs 25 says, Through, though good advice lies deep within a counselor's heart, the wise man will draw it out. So when you're selecting that sponsor, ask yourself, does their walk match their talk? Are they living the eight principles? I've known many people who have the 12-step lingo down pat, but their lifestyle doesn't match their talk. Be certain that the person that you choose as a sponsor is someone whose life example is worthy of imitation. Do they have a growing relationship with Jesus Christ? Do they see the character of, do you see the character of Christ growing in them? <clears throat> Do they express the desire to help others on their road to recovery? There's a difference between helping others and trying to fix others. There's a big difference. We all need to be careful to guard the sponsorship relationship from becoming unhealthy and codependent. Do they show compassion, care, and hope, but not pity? You don't need someone to feel sorry for you, but you do need someone to be sensitive to your pain. You want somebody that's empathetic, that can feel that through with you. Are they a good listener? Do you sense that they honestly care about what you have to say? Are they listening? 
<clears throat> are they strong enough to comfort, confront your denial or procrastination? I am a very stubborn person. I'm a type A personality. I will tell you what's on my mind. I do it a little, little, a little more controlled nowadays. However, with somebody with that personality, it takes somebody with grace and compassion and love to be able to, to point things out to me. And I like that wise, truthful person. You don't need to give me lies and praise. But <clears throat> do they care enough about you and your recovery to challenge you? Mine does. Mine. <laughs> Do they offer suggestions? Sometimes we need help in seeing options or alternatives that we are unable to find on our own. A good sponsor can take an objective view and offer suggestions. They should not give orders. And that's another thing that I'm finding is that, you know, when you're in your head, you live with yourself, you, you're in your head all the time, and someone's outside of your head, and it's actually refreshing because they can see things from a totally different perspective than the way you're taking it in. <clears throat> so what is the role of a sponsor? Let's take a look at a few things that your sponsor can do. They can be there to discuss issues in detail that are too personal or would take too much time in a meeting. There's lots of things. People have self-talk, um, things that they try to rationalize. I'm the lowest form of life on earth is a phrase often repeated. Others deny, rationalize, and blame. Okay, I admit I did such and such, but it's not as if I killed anyone. Um, sure, I did A, B, C, but my spouse did G through Z. Compared to my, compared to my spouse, I'm a saint. Um, yeah. So, all right, I admit it, but I never would have done it if my boss wasn't such a jerk. Uh, yeah, we all, we have these thoughts. But this is where a sponsor can be there to share his or her own experiences and to offer strength and hope. You think you feel like a bum, maybe. So let me tell you how I felt when I did my inventory. Yeah, I felt like a bum. Um, I felt like every single thing when I was doing my inventory was just okay, I see that this was wrong, this was wrong, this was wrong, this was wrong, this was wrong. Because when I went in with my inventory, it was, oh my goodness, this person did this. My sponsor's got to obviously see that, um, that that's, just, that's just crazy. Come on now, sponsor, you're going to be able to be like, yeah, you, you, good job there. No, what was my part of this situation with this part of my inventory? What did I do? And it starts opening those floodgates as far as, looking at um, you taking accountability and, and working on things. So <clears throat> number two, your sponsor is available in times, you wanna make sure your sponsor is available in times of crisis or potential relapse. I'm far enough through my recovery with alcoholism that this past New Year's Eve, I was in a situation that I didn't really plan to be in and it could have been very easy for me to relax. Liquor bottles, like lots of things around me, but I am far enough through that I knew I needed to take myself out of that situation. Had I been a lot younger in, my, in, in, this, um, in this program, I would have been calling maybe several times to you know, get me out of my head and get me to God, get me right with God and the sponsor to be there for me. <clears throat> so remember Ecclesiastes 4.12, two people can resist an attack that would defeat one person alone. Number three, they serve as a sounding board by providing an objective point of view. This is especially true in principle six. When you're dealing with a sensitive area of making amends and offering forgiveness, you need a good sounding board. You might think, oh my goodness, well, my dad, I'm gonna make amends with him, but you know, this is what I wanna say to him. And it might sound really, really good to you, but when you talk to your sponsor and let them know, they can see that objectively and, and, and maybe offer you some advice on giving a little more grace because you know, they've been through this. They, they know 
some, some things that work and they want to see you succeed with this. <clears throat> they are there to encourage you to work the principles at your own speed. It's not their job to work the principles for you though. They can coach your progress, confront you when you're stuck, and slow you down when you're working too fast. That's me. I try to get ahead of God very often. I get told to get back behind God, and I'm thankful for those that do that. Five, most important, they attempt to model the lifestyle that results from working the eight principles. It's difficult to inspire others to accomplish what you haven't been willing to try yourself. A good sponsor lives those principles. A sponsor can resign or be fired. Sponsorship is not a lifetime position. I know for me, um, when I started, Celebrate Recovery is totally different than AA. I love Celebrate Recovery. AA, I, I, I let the Lord into my heart. Celebrate Recovery is where it's at. Um, however, I had my first sponsor there, and I did have to fire them because they weren't helping me in my program and they were trying to fix me and they were very codependent and I had to fire them and that didn't go over well. This is a safe spot here at Celebrate Recovery and you should be able to fire someone. This is about your recovery. This is about their recovery as well. And anyone who's going to be a sponsor here already knows that anybody has that right. This is about their recovery. So we're very well aware of this. Um, so how do you find a sponsor and or accountability partner? The responsibility of finding a sponsor and or accountability partner is yours, but let me give you a few final guidelines to help you in your search. First and foremost, the person must be of the same sex as you, no exceptions. As we always say, we're not here to find a date or a mate. <clears throat> Can you relate to the person's story? If you're choosing someone to be your sponsor, does he or she meet the qualities of a good sponsor that we just covered. Come to the Forever Family Meal and the Solid Rock Cafe. Invest some time in fellowship and get to know others in this group. That's the main reason we have these fellowship events. If you ask someone to be your sponsor and or accountability partner and that person says no, please don't take it personal. Um, as I said, that this is their recovery and their recovery has to come first as well. If someone turns you down, ask someone else. It's just that easy. You can even ask for a temporary sponsor or an accountability partner. Remember, these are not lifetime commitments. Most important, ask God to lead you to the sponsor and or accountability partner of his choosing. He knows you and everyone in this room. He knows what you're going through. He knows he's going to be the best fit and he will, he will talk to you. You just need to ask. He already has somebody in mind for you. What is the difference between a sponsor and an accountability partner? So a sponsor is someone who has completed the four Celebrate Recovery participant guides and has worked through the eight principles and the 12 steps. He or she meets the six requirements that we talked about in the role of a sponsor. The main goal of this relationship is to choose someone to guide you through the program. An accountability partner is someone you ask to hold you accountable for certain areas of your recovery or issues, such as meeting attendance, journaling, and so forth. This person can be at the same level of recovery as you, unlike a sponsor. <clears throat> who should have completed the eight principles or the 12 steps. The main goal of this relationship is to encourage one another. You can even form an accountability team of three or four. The accountability partner or group acts as a team, whereas the sponsor's role is that of a coach. There is a lot of thought-provoking questions gone over tonight. Really start thinking about these things while looking for a sponsor and or accountability partner, and you can start that tonight you're just going to want to really, really embrace this opportunity to find one because this is going to be critical to your road to recovery. We must work these steps. Um, thank you, everyone, for letting me share. And that's all I have.
was a phenomenal lesson. Give her a hand again, please. <clears throat> so you've heard some interesting things brought forth this evening. A sponsor, accountability partner. Uh, maybe the first thing that comes to mind, is it even biblical? Well, yes, it is. You just heard scriptures tonight that back up the proof that we are not meant to live life walking alone. Of course, we need a God who's greater than anything, who's sovereign, who knows all in the universe, who can lead, guide, and direct us. We need a Savior, someone who can show us that way to eternity, and his name is Jesus Christ. That's our higher power. But we need someone to walk with us. When we stumble, when we fall, they can help pick us up, brush the dust off our knees, and encourage us along that way. You heard a passage that I mention a lot tonight from Ecclesiastes chapter 4. It says, or two, two are much better than one because they can accomplish great things. And that's, that's really a, that's a Ray paraphrase of it. Uh, it goes on to say that if, if one stumbles, the other's there to, to, to pick him up. If, if one is cold, the other's there to keep him warm. And so you might be asking, well, well, couldn't my spouse do that for me? Couldn't my boyfriend or girlfriend do that to me? Well, let me just pose a question to you. If you just had an argument with your spouse, do you want them to hold you accountable in that argument? There may be a little bias there. And I know I may be getting some smiles and maybe a few, a few laughs out of that, but the truth is this. If I just had a disagreement with my wife, I'm going to want to talk to someone uh, that's wise, much wiser than me possibly, and, and what we should do to, to work through this disagreement. That's the truth. That's the truth. Um, and to be honest with you, a lot of times I've heard, hey, you just need to get your heart right, Ray. And I've heard that a lot, a lot of my life. Uh, over the years that I've been in recovery. The truth is, is that having accountability, having a sponsor helps us keep our heart right with the Lord. Helps keep our heart right with the Lord. Um, Lamentations 3.40 says, let us examine our ways, let us test them, and let us return to the Lord. It's a powerful verse. Jeremiah wrote this as he is encouraging the nation of Israel to ask God for forgiveness where they had turned their back on God. They had worshipped false idols. They had done everything possible but give God number one in their life. And he's encouraging, encouraging them. It's time to ask for forgiveness. It's time to be reconciled. You see, just think for a moment. Jeremiah was holding the nation of Israel accountable. He was holding himself accountable for the sins that they had committed by turning their back on the Lord. And he said, let us examine our ways. Let us test them and let us return to the Lord. So let's consider another verse that was mentioned tonight. Iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Those had to have been sobering words to the nation of Israel, to the people that Jeremiah wrote this letter to as that scroll began to be passed around to all the Israelites and they read this wow I've put God last in my life he's supposed to be first he said he's my rock he's my shield he's my comfort in times of trouble and I've ignored that I've tried to fix things on my own I've tried to do things my way and when they read this they stop and think for just a moment I need to be last God needs to be first so we pose the question tonight about accountability that is in sponsor. Having accountability and having a sponsor. I want to pose to you another question. Do you have a Savior? Do you have a Savior? There was another verse that's mentioned tonight. And this is such a beautiful lesson. It really is. It truly is. Proverbs 20, verse 5. says, Though good advice lies deep within a man's heart, it's the wise man that will draw it out. For many years, I had a mentor who, whenever I would talk with him, he, and, and I would share my heart with him if there was 
a bad day, there was something I didn't know how to uh, saw a problem I didn't know how to solve, if there was a situation I needed advice and how to, to work through. It's interesting, he would always ask the questions. He would very rarely give an answer. But interestingly enough, when he would ask the questions, I would have the answer. Wise man knows how to draw it out. So let me pose a few thoughts to you. Jesus is walking through the city streets and the woman who has a condition of of bleeding touches the hem of his garment and he says, who touched me? He knew who touched him. He knew full well who did it. But here's what Jesus wanted the woman to do. To acknowledge that she was in need. He asked the question. And she said it was I Lord. Let's go a step further. And quite a bit deeper. When Jesus is standing in front of Pilate. Pilate says what is truth. Jesus said you should know the truth. In so many words, the truth was standing in front of him. Pilate should have known the truth. He saw the truth. It was in his face. And it was Jesus Christ. The great I am, the living water, the bread of life, the the vine. The one that Pilate should have been connected to. But it was the one that Pilate refused. And it's sad that if we read in Roman history about Pilate, he committed suicide. And I hope that's not too harsh for anyone tonight, but the truth is this. He didn't give up of himself. He did not give up of himself and give in to Jesus Christ. The great I am. The truth was in front of him and he refused that truth. And it drove him mad. Sad. God desires that none should perish but all would come to him. The truth is this. We choose. We choose. You and I choose either heaven or hell. We choose to accept the truth that lies within Jesus Christ and the work that he did on Calvary. Dying for the forgiveness of our sins. He died for what I did wrong. He died for what I did wrong. He died for what you did wrong. Oh, I'm a good person. Well, no, we're not. He said, there's not one good. He said, we're all filthy rags. But the death on the cross by the Son of God is what makes us white as snow when we accept him as Lord. That's it. You're not going to work your way into heaven. There's not enough good deeds on the planet to get you there. It takes a one The one spotless, sinless Lamb of God that sacrificed his life so that you could have life. You need to relent to him. So you ask, what's truth? Well, Jesus Christ told the Pharisees the truth would set them free. Again, they're always looking for a sign. They ask, what is truth? The truth was right in front of them. You might not be able to see Jesus Christ face to face tonight, but you've had evidence. You've heard God's word given to you. You've heard the truth. And if you haven't been set free, then tonight's the night to do that, to be free for time and eternity, to give your heart 
to the one that came to seek and save you when you were lost. Can I tell you? It's a peace that passes any understanding. But does that mean life's going to be perfect from now on? No. We're going to have trials. We're going to have troubles. Jesus Christ said we would. But we now have one that we can go to to overcome them. And his name is Jesus. So you have a choice. Are you willing to give in, give up of yourself? Or you want to keep doing things your way? Our way, my way, your way, it's failure. Ultimately, utter failure. God's way, eternity. Eternity. And the truth is this. I love what he says in Revelation. He said he gives you a crown. When Christ is your Savior, you have a crown. It's not a crown of authority. It's a crown of royalty. Oh, man. A crown of royalty. When you accept him as Lord, when you ask for the forgiveness of your sins, he makes you a prince and a princess. You're a child of the king. Man, it doesn't get any better than that. Doesn't get any better than that. So if you're wondering what does that look like tonight, well, you have a choice. You could come talk to me. I would love for you to. If you don't know what that freedom looks like, if you don't know what being a princess or a prince of the king of kings and the Lord of lords looks like, then we need to talk. You need to settle it for time and eternity.